guys, Mr. Backerberg here. Uh, lesson 1.1 is all about rectangular coordinates. You can see I've got four objectives listed there. First thing we're going to take a look at doing is plotting some points out on our Cartesian plane. That's just our normal X and Y plane that we're used to working with. Uh, number two says we're going to use our distance formula to find the distance between a couple of points out on that plane. Three says we're going to use our midpoint formula to find the midpoint of a line segment. And then number four says we're going to translate some points in the plane. Uh, that just means we're going to move those points around. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, on the right hand side of the screen I've got a picture of our rectangular coordinate grid also known as the Cartesian plane. I'm just going to run through some highlights quick before we get too far into things. Uh, and I guess the first thing I want you to notice about this grid are the two axes. Okay, remember we've got an x-axis which runs horizontally or left and right through the picture. And then we've also got a y-axis which runs vertically. Now these two axes split our grid into four distinct pieces which we're going to call quadrants. And naming those quadrants, we always start in the top right hand corner. That's our first quadrant. And then we work counterclockwise around naming the rest of them. So top left hand corner is the second quadrant. Bottom left is our third quadrant. And then bottom right is the fourth quadrant. Another key aspect is where these two axes come together. I'm going to highlight this point real quick right here. It's known as our origin. And as far as its location on the grid goes, it's the point zero, zero. Remember this coordinate grid is like a two-dimensional map that can take us to any location using these ordered pairs. Remember we write ordered pairs in this x comma y form meaning, uh, I guess this first value, meaning how far are we moving left or right since our x-axis runs left and right. We go left if that number is negative and we go to the right if that number is positive. If we look at the second y value right here, well our y-axis runs up and down, so this y value tells us how far we're going to go, up or down. Positives move us up and negatives move us down. So let's go ahead and actually plot some points out. Left hand side of the screen I've got four different ordered pairs that we're going to plot out. So we're going to use what we talked about on the last slide to help us out. So I'm going to take a look at this first ordered pair. Okay, We've got negative one comma four. Well, if we look at this first value, remember that number is our x value, and that tells us how far we're going to move left or right. Since this one is a negative one, that means we're going to have to move left one space. Second number in our ordered pair is our y value, that tells us how far we're moving up or down. It's a positive four, so that means we're going to move up four spaces. So for this first ordered pair, we're going to go left one and up four spaces. Let's maybe call this point A so that we can keep track of these things. Next ordered pair, we've got four comma negative three. Well, our x value is positive, so that means we're moving to the right. Our y value is negative, so we're moving down. Uh, let's call this one point B so we can plot it out. So we have to go right four spaces and down three spaces. Next ordered pair we're taking a look at, we'll call this one point C. We've got five comma zero. Well, positive x value means we're going to the right. This y value is zero, so it's not really positive, it's not really negative. But since it's zero, we're not going anywhere. So for c, we're just going to count right five spaces. Okay, we don't have to go up or down at all since that y value is zero. Similarly with this next one, we've got a zero x value. So that means we're not going to move anywhere left or right. We just have to go down one space. And I guess we'd be calling this one point d. Now that we've plotted out some points, uh, we're going to start actually doing some things with those points. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our distance formula to find the distance between our points. So let's say we're given some general points x1, y1, and x2, y2. If we want to find the distance between these, essentially what we're going to be using, it's like a Pythagorean theorem idea kind of extended out into these ordered pairs. So you guys might remember your distance formula. Here it is. Okay, it says d is equal to the square root of, go ahead and subtract those x values. So what that's doing is it's finding this horizontal distance. But then we have to square it because, like I said, it's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem. And then we're going to add on those y values, subtract it, so finding this vertical height. But again, square it because it's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem. Let's start actually working with some numbers. 
Uh, I'm giving you two ordered pairs. We've got negative 5, 2, which I've already plotted out right here. And we've got 3, negative 4, again, plotted out for us. What we're going to do is we're going to find the distance between these using our distance formula, which is on our screen. Very first thing I always like to do is to label my ordered pairs. So this is going to be my x1, y1 ordered pair. And here's going to be my x2, y2. So what we need to do is we just need to fill in the information in our formula and then just do a little arithmetic. So we've got the square root of, well, our x2 value is 3 minus our x1 value is negative 5. And we'll have to square all that and then add on, uh, let's do the same thing with the y value, so our y2 value is negative 4 minus our y1 value which is 2 and again square that. So if we start simplifying the things underneath the radical right now well with this first uh, piece we've got a double negative going on so I'm going to turn that into addition 3 plus 5 is 8 and we'll need to square that. If we look at this second piece of information we've got negative 4 minus 2 which is negative 6, and we'll need to square that also. Simplifying a little bit further, 8 squared is 64, negative 6 squared is a positive 36. Uh, adding those things up underneath the radical, we get the square root of 100. And if we take the square root of 100, that's just 10. So the distance between these two points is 10 units. Okay, whatever the case may be, inches, feet, miles, we would just have to be sure that we're labeling appropriately. Okay, here's another example. Uh, if you guys want to, now might be a good time to pause the video and run through this one on your own, and then you can restart it and check your answers later on. So if we're just setting up our distance formula again, okay, we've got d equals the square root of, I'm going to label these real quick, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So we're going to take 8 minus negative 6, square that, and then add on, let's see, 4 minus 1 squared. So we've got the square root of, well, 8 minus negative 6 ends up being 14 squared plus this 3 squared. Uh, 14 squared is 196, 3 squared is 9. If we add those together, we get the square root of 205. Uh, this is one that we're probably going to have to punch into our calculator. And I'm going to go two decimals, so that ends up being 14.32 units. Next thing we're going to be taking a look at is our midpoint formula. Uh, so given two points, again, we're just going to work in generalities for right now. We've got x1, y1, and x2, y2. The name kind of tells you what we're going to be doing. It's a midpoint, so we're finding a point in the middle. So if we think of like some math terminology things, well, a middle value would be like an average value. So in order to find our midpoint, what we're going to do is we're going to average out this x value by adding up the two x values and then dividing by two. And then we're going to average out those y values by adding those things up and then again dividing by two. So if we look at this example, okay, we've got negative five comma two and three comma negative four. Well, it says in order to find the midpoint, well, I guess we said we were going to average those values. So let's add up those two x values. We've got negative 5 and 3. Then we're going to divide that by 2. And then if we look at adding up those y values, we've got 2 and uh, negative 4. And then we'll divide that by 2. So negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 divided by 2. And then 2 plus negative 4 is also negative 2 divided by 2. Simplifying each one of these fractions down, well, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1 in both cases. So there's our midpoint, negative 1, negative 1. Here's another example. So just like before with that second distance formula example, you should pause the video right now, run through this one, and then you can check your answers once you're all done. So if we look at finding the midpoint of these two points, okay, we've got negative 6, 1, and 8, 4. Just like we did before, we're going to add up those x values first and divide by 2. And then we'll add up those y values and again divide by 2. So negative 6 plus 8 is 2 over 2. And 1 plus 4 is 5 over 2. Uh, 2 divided by 2 is just 1. 5 divided by 2 doesn't really divide evenly, so we can just leave it as is. Okay, We can just leave it as 5 halves. 
If we did want to turn that into a decimal, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. Really, either one of these answers would be acceptable. Last thing we're doing in this video is we're going to be translating some points in the plane. Uh, so like I said earlier, that just means we're going to be moving some points around. So we're given a triangle with vertices at negative 1, negative 3, 5, 1, and 2, 4. And we're going to take that triangle and shift it two units to the left and three units down. And then we have to figure out the locations of those new vertices. Really, there's two ways we can go about this, and I'm going to show you both ways. One way is by just taking a look at the picture. Okay, I'm going to work with point C right here. Uh, it says we want to move two units to the left. Well, if I start at point C, it's pretty easy to move two units to the left. And then from there, we're going to go three units down. And let's give this a different name. Let's just call this one point D. Okay, so we would know automatically that point D is at um, 0, 1, just by taking that actual point C and moving it. The other thing we can do is we can think about what these ordered pairs actually are. Okay, remember we're given an x value and we're given a y value. Now I did leave that space in there on purpose because since we're moving this two units to the left, well if we're talking about this x value, a left movement means a negative movement. So we're going to subtract off two from whatever x value we're given. Looking at this y value right here, well it says we're moving down. Again, down as far as y values go is like subtraction or negative. And we're going to move three units down. So we can take our y values and subtract three. So if we take a look at like point A, well, point A looks like it's at negative one, negative three. So it's this first one right here. Well, if we take negative one and subtract two, we're going to get negative three. And if we take negative three and subtract three more, we're going to get negative six. Now let's maybe call this one point E. So left three down six puts us right here. And then the last point we need to work with, I guess, is point B. Well, that's over five spaces and up one space. That's this one right here. So if we do that subtraction, we'll call this one point F. Uh, if we do that subtraction, five minus two is three, and one minus three is negative two. So plotting that one out, we have to go over three and down two. And we call that point F. All right, I guess that's really all we have for this video. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to fill out the Google form, which is going to be linked in the description down below.